Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life and I'm here today to film a book haul. Um, I teased this a few videos ago. This is a book haul that was unexpected in two ways. The first group of books are books that were sent to me by Doris from Aldi Books and that was a surprise addition to my TBR. Very welcome addition, but surprised um, to receive. I expected her to send me one book <laughs> and then she sent me four instead. So those will be the first books that I talk about. And then we have a um, a local chain store which is like a surplus and salvage type store so they buy up inventory from businesses that are going out of business or you know for other reasons have to get rid of the inventory and I heard the one most closely uh, located near where I live had gotten in a big shipment of books that they were selling for a 70% discount. So I thought I'd run in and check it out uh, one day when I happened to be in that locality and left with quite a few books so I am going to share them with you now so the first four books that I received from Doris first of all this is the book I knew she was sending me this is bring up the bodies by Hilary Mantel this is book two in the Thomas Cromwell series historical fiction um, I read uh, Wolf Hall in December and I am going to be reading this book in February with um, lots of folks who are reading this at this point on booktube in anticipation of um, the new book coming out in March uh, which I don't remember the title of right now. Uh, she also sent me this World War I historical fiction. This is Regeneration by Pat Barker. This is the first book in a trilogy by this author about World War I and I have been interested in this book particularly since I read um, the book about the uh, flu in, in um, the Great Influenza in December and also because uh, I can't remember where else I heard about this but Sean and I from Sean the Book Maniac were planning to do a buddy read of this book and we'll be doing that this spring so I'm very excited about that and excited to have my own copy of this book. The next book she sent me was Disgrace by J.M. Coatsy, which you can't see because there's a sticker on there, but just ignore that. So this is a um, South African novel, um, and it is about a professor who I think gets into a relationship with one of his students, um, and I think it's like a post-apartheid, or is it during apartheid? I can't remember. But anyway, this was you know, due to Doris's reading South African literature last month and um, she came across this copy and I wanted to read it so she sent it up to me very nicely. And then lastly, um, she sent me Inland by Taya Obrett, which is uh, a fiction which is currently on the Book Two Prize long list, so that's very exciting. And I don't even really know what this is about. This is historical fiction, I believe. It takes place in Arizona in 1893. Um, and so that sounds really interesting. I like books that take place in the American West in that time period, so that one will be fun to read. So then we come to the books that I picked up at the local Surplus and Salvage store, and I was extremely excited. I think it might have been like a Barnes and Nobles or something like that that got closed down because there were some Barnes and Noble edition books, and these are all brand new, um, books that were 70% discount so of the lowest ticketed price which was awesome. The first book I was excited to purchase this is The Farm in the Green Mountains by Alice Herd Herden Zuckmeyer um, and it's translated from the German fr by Ida Washington and Carol Washington. So I first heard about this book on somebody's booktube channel like over a year ago. I don't even remember who it was now. If it was you, thank you. Um, and it sounded super interesting. And so that's why I grabbed it when I saw it at uh, the store. But luckily, also, this is translated from the German, so it fits into the read German literature um, theme, which is happening throughout the year, uh, throughout 2020, hosted by Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures and Britta Bowler. And in fact, this book might have. Um, I can't remember who had this, but maybe it was Mel who read this. I can't remember. But it sounded sufficiently interesting to me that when I saw it on the shelf, I just grabbed it. So this is a memoir of a woman 
who, with her family, flees Nazi Germany and travels um, to the United States and buys a farm in Vermont. And they live there in the rural part of Vermont, like raising chickens and all that sort of stuff when they are very much an urban family. <laughs> so it's a refugee story. It's translated fiction. It's all about people from the city trying to build a life on a farm in Vermont. Like, yeah, ticks all my boxes. I am excited to read that one. Um, I then saw this little gem. This is All Passion Spent by Vita Sackville West. And this was just a total, like, Sean was reading Vita Sackville West. I think I want to try her as an author. I've never read anything by her. And this is a great uh, cover. I love these little vintage classic um, covers with the little triangles up in the top. I do like these editions. And I have no idea what this is about at all. It looks like... Um, this is about a, a widow, an 88-year-old widow of a former Prime Minister of Great Britain and Viceroy of India. Um, so she is going to defy convention and always up for an elderly lady defying convention. I do like that theme. I found a David Mitchell on the shelf. This is Black Swan Green by David Mitchell. Um, I really love, I've read like four books by David Mitchell now and I really love his style of like it's a blend of everything I've read by him so far has been a blend of like speculative historical fiction. Um, so there's historical fiction, there's some science fiction, there's like just a it's just a mishmash of a bunch of different uh, genres in his books, and I just love his writing style. My favorite by him is Cloud Atlas, um, but I have enjoyed everything that I've read by this author. So when I saw this copy of Black Swan Green. I just had to get it. Um, this book takes place in Cold War, Cold War England in 1982. Um, and that's it. That's all I know about it. I just want to read more David Mitchell. Eventually I want to read all of David Mitchell. Um, I found this book, Disoriental, by Negar Javadi. I just butchered that, I'm sure. Um, Javadi. There's no R in the last name, Heidi. Uh, and this was a book that I saw on some folks' channels last year. Maybe Jacqueline at Six Minute for Me. Um, can't really remember who else read this last year, but I know I saw it on a bunch of people's channels. This is translated from the French. Uh, and this is a saga of 20th century Iran and an intimate story of a young woman's determination to create a future on her own terms. Um, so... It's about a woman who flees Iran and moves to France and about her life and her family um, growing up as an immigrant in France. Uh, yeah, sounds good. Sounds like there's gonna be a bunch of Iranian history in there. Um, I love these Europa editions too. Like, gotta love a flap, a French flap on a paperback, right? Um, I picked up The Painted Veil by W. Somerset Mom and I have only read um, On Human Bondage by W. Somerset Maugham, and I read it years ago, and I really, really enjoyed it. And I really like the premise of this one, which is about a woman who um, travels with her husband, who is a scientist trying to um, solve problems related to disease, the spread of disease, and uh, she ends up getting involved in an affair with somebody else and when her husband finds out his um, response to that is to drag her off into the wilds of China uh, and basically I think he wants her to catch some disease and die but I don't think that's what happens so I mean this is sounds really awesome and fascinating it takes place in the 1920s um, yeah I don't know I like books that have to do with people trying to struggle with um, disease outbreaks, which is a weird thing to enjoy, but I do. <laughs> um, I then found a book by Ruth Ozeki. This is My Year of Meats. Uh, I had read her, uh, what was the name of her other book? Now I can't even remember it. Um, it's totally gone out of my head. The one about uh, the woman finds the the young girl's journal washed up on the beach in the Pacific Northwest. You guys know the one I'm talking about. I'll I'll put the cover up on the screen because I can't remember it. I buddy read that with Lindsay last year. 
maybe the year before even. It's been a while since I read it. Um, but I love that book. And so this one is about uh, the American meat exported biz exporting business and some of the nasty bits about that. Um, I've read some nonfiction about the meat industry in the United States, which is very, very disturbing. So I have been really interested in this book ever since I heard what its theme was. Um, so I am excited to read it. And it's a lot shorter than the other book that I read by Ruth Ozeki. I wish I could remember what the name of that book was. It's terrible to lose your memory, people. It's just terrible. I then picked up another um, classic. This is Far From the Mending Crowd by Thomas Hardy. A bunch of you here on BookTube have been singing this book's praises. Um, I had read, uh, what's, what's Thomas Hardy's? I've read at least one other book by Thomas Hardy. Um, can't remember that one either. That one was about the, about the Moors. Tess of the Durbervilles. <laughs> That's the one I read. I don't know why the Moors are the thing that sticks in my head about that book. Um, because the guy's the strange color, right? From Cutting Pete. That's the thing that sticks in my head about that book. But this one is about uh, Bathsheba who um, has is sought by three different men in her struggling to like find her own way in life. Um, and I believe Doris, you really love this one if I remember correctly and a bunch of people have really uh, talked this book up a lot. So I uh, was happy to find a copy of that one. Another book that I can blame on Doris is this one, Shark Drunk, The Art of Catching a Large Shark from a Tiny Rubber Dinghy in a Big Ocean by Morton Struxness. Struxnins? Struxnins. Uh, sorry for butchering this name as well. Um, this is translated from the Norwegian, and this is nonfiction. This is the only, is this the only nonfiction in my pile? Yeah, it's the only nonfiction in my pile. Can you believe that? That's crazy. This never happens. I never buy this much fiction at once. So um, this book, uh, Doris had been has shown on her channel a number of times, but I don't think she's actually gone ahead and read it yet. Um, I think this sounds awesome, like just the subtitle alone made me want to read it, and um, I don't read very much translated nonfiction, so that was another uh, big positive in its favor. I'm really excited to, to read some translated nonfiction. And then one last book, it's a huge chunker sci-fi. This is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey, and this is a book that... Um, uh, I've heard about on several different booktube channels as well and um, it just sounds so interesting and I've been wanting a new science fiction series to sort of dive into and sink my teeth into. Um, these ones, this is a quite a long running series I think and they're almost all like this big so it should be, it should satisfy my urge to get into some epic science fiction. I think this is kind of like a space opera style, um, more of a space opera versus a hard sci-fi, which is my preference for science fiction. Uh, and it looks like it's sort of a, a mystery wrapped up in it too because of the detective looking for a girl in the, you know, across multiple uh, solar systems. So um, an adventure and some mystery and some maybe some other stuff in there and just sounds awesome. So, oh, I wanted to say that the first place I heard about this book was um, from Cheryl over at CR Flames Fan, um, a Canadian booktuber who I really enjoy, and she really uh, sold me on this book. So hopefully I'm going to love that one. So that's my book haul. You can see that right from the start, January has really... Mm, been not so good for my TBR reduction plans, but it's been awesome for me getting some great new books into my house. And I'm not sorry. Just as I said the other day, I'm not sorry about it at all. So that's it. Uh, please let me know down below if you've read any of these books, if you would recommend any one of them, particularly over the others. Um, I hope to be back with another sort of like currently reading style video in a few days. And until then, I'll talk to you later.